Though it may be hard to tell in recent videos, I am by all accounts an introvert. Over the years, I have learned what works for me to continue showing up in community with ease and presence, which has really changed my life. I recently road tripped with four friends for two weeks straight, and these are some things that I did. I brought a simple traveling altar with me with incense, my favorite cacao, and my yoga mat. These are all anchors of presence for me that I find refuge in, but for you, it could be a playlist, an instrument you're learning to play, and your favorite kind of tea. The mornings were an unspoken quiet time for all of us. I usually do a yoga practice focused on forward folds and twists because those are supremely grounding to the nervous system, but any movement that my body is craving can Connected to my breath feels like medicine. Although we had full plans every day, so I wasn't always able to have an hour long practice, and I don't think it's fully necessary to be attached to that. Any moment of deep awareness will ripple throughout your day, whether that's taking deep breaths with your coffee or a calm moment journaling in a cafe. Any way that you can routinely drop into the truest part of yourself will feel really replenishing. Another one of my favorite grounding practices is cooking cooking for myself, which can be hard to do when you're traveling or road tripping, but I did manage to make it a priority and pick up some local veggies here and there. Taking care of my gut health with daily probiotics and eating things my body really loves helps me to not feel overly depleted and imbalanced because when I'm not sleeping or eating well, it's so much easier for me to feel moody or not want to be around anyone, as one might expect. And lastly, before we get into it i had so much work to do this one day and i decided to cancel the plans i made with my friends and just stay home getting some things done and i felt so fulfilled and complete i always recommend honoring your internal needs over not wanting to miss out or feeling fomo especially if you know you're sensitive to social burnout it's just not worth it Hello my fellow earth angels, thank you so much for being here and joining me today. I'm so well versed in this topic, at least from my own experience. I have always been extremely introverted. I grew up with two of my siblings and they were very extroverted. My sister always had friends over just piling into the living room every single day and I would stay upstairs in my room as much as possible. Sometimes I would come down for like five minutes just to say hi and people would be like, oh my god, I didn't even know you're here what are you doing in your room you know and i would just be like just doing some diys and just run back upstairs i define being an introvert as someone who really gets filled up with their time alone. That's how I fill up my cup and feel more like myself and an extrovert being someone who gets more charged by being social and interacting with community. Google says that an introvert is someone who is simply shy or reticent. I want to pose this question to you, one that I had to ask myself recently is, are all of my attempts at being alone the result of being an introvert or are there parts of me that still feel unworthy of being seen? And I think that I used to isolate myself a lot and mask it as being an introvert, which wasn't the healthiest. I realized that I actually am so afraid of being deeply flawed around other people or simply showing up in community when I feel tired or when I don't feel like I look good or when I'm anxious or don't have my to-do list done. I only liked showing up when I was my fullest, most vibrant, most energized, positive self and no other time. And that's just not healthy because all aspects of ourselves are worthy and welcome. And to foster deep, intimate relationships, you have to kind of be human and let down that wall and be imperfect around others. And that's something that has been continually breaking my heart open as I show up imperfectly and still feel so loved and held. When I would have social anxiety, I would take some time before entering a new space, a party, a yoga classroom, whatever it was, and kind of dissolve all concepts of what I know myself to be and breathe deeply into my heart breathe my worth into my heart and call upon all the things that I actually really do enjoy about myself and give myself a little pep talk in this way and feel into this radiant heart space, this energy of love that I have for all beings everywhere. It sounds really simple, but I also do this before filming. It's kind of like, what are my intentions? Who really am I in this world? I'm not just this body. I'm not just this name. 
I am a conscious witnessing embodiment of love. As corny as that sounds, that is how I identify myself at my, at my core. And so breathing into that can just be a really good reminder and anchor for you so that whenever your mind wants to go back into the anxiety of I'm not good enough, I'm weird, I'm awkward, it's like, I'm actually just a being of love. So that's powerful <laughs> and untouchable. So I've learned for myself that I can spend around three days alone and feel good about that. By the end of the third day, I might feel a little anxious, a little uneasy, or that alone time will start to feel lonely. And that's when I know that I need to hang out with someone. And because I know this about myself, I make about two to three plans a week, <laughs> face them out accordingly so that I can fill up my cup, but then I don't like isolate myself fully, which is something that's kind of easy to do as an introvert. It can be really helpful to know where you feel the most safe speaking those boundaries. It's going to be different depending on who you're talking to, but I am still really sensitive and empathetic. So sharing my boundaries through a message can be really helpful. And even just sending a voice memo as an initial spark of the conversation and being like, maybe we can dive into this more in person. That has been immensely helpful for me. I know I need to be deeply quiet with myself. That feels like medicine to me over everything. And when I have my headphones in, I'm also probably not in a really good headspace to talk. I'm just pretty introverted and I wanted to let you know so that we can just coexist in a really beautiful way. And then you can follow it up with in the mornings, I don't really feel super social or when I'm in the middle of my work schedule at home. I may not be open to hour long conversations, but I can drop in for 10 or 20 minutes. And I literally just spoke this boundary to a friend uh, yesterday and I sent it through a voice memo. I was really nervous, but then I was like, I want to anchor in the world that I want to exist within where everyone is safe to be themselves. And if that's the world that I believe in, then I should act accordingly. And I sent it and she took it so well, so. Aw, oh, sweet love. Thank you so much for sharing what's present on your heart and what's what you're navigating. I so appreciate your vulnerability and your transparency with me. And I absolutely want to honor you in every way that feels good and never want to have you feel overexerted, uncomfortable, any... Anyway. It was really sweet. I literally cried uh, upon receiving that. <laughs> and you could also ask your friends and family, hey, I'm gonna go for a walk at some point every day just to be with myself. And I'll let you know in the morning, according to our plans, when I can do that. But I think that would be really good for my mental health. Simple as that, should get the job done. Instead of profusely apologizing for your needs, being like, thank you for seeing this. Thank you for, entering into the intimacy of who I really am and for learning how to love me. This is such a beautiful thing. Neutral, loving information being shared. Also continuing to see your therapist no matter where you are, not neglecting those things that do make you feel really good and grounded. And I wanted to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals like feelings of shame or guilt? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And there is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselor network, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to wait in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So visit betterhelp.com slash hitomi. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And there's a special offer for you. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash hitomi. You can also make a list of what fills you up to do in community, things that you really enjoy that don't overexert you as an introvert. 
For example, going to a yoga class or even doing a video online at your house, a YouTube video, cooking a meal together rather than going to dinner, which can feel really formal. For me as an introvert, it's like my worst nightmare to go to dinner with new people. It's just, we're sitting across from each other. We have no choice but to gaze into each other's eyes. There's no flow or ease to it. So instead, I would much rather have a dinner party. We can all move around. I feel comfortable in this space. I can leave when I want to. So that is something that I love knowing about myself, dinner parties over going to dinner. Um, you can go to the movies together, go to a bookstore, just do activities that make you feel safe as an introvert. And I pretty much don't make any plans more than a week out unless it's traveling. I really like to feel into what's going on for me that day internally and externally. And that's immensely helpful because it's the worst feeling when you make a plan and then it arrives and you just have so much regret and there's no ease and you just feel so heavy about it. So I try to avoid that at all costs. And you can make a cope ahead plan. This is something that I learned in the hospital, which is just really helpful for whatever you might confront on your family vacation or your trips with friends, just knowing what the problem could be or how it could feel in your body and what you want to do to respond to it. Uh, some things for me are definitely just taking myself out of the situation, going for a walk, doing some chanting, some oming, vocal toning, dropping into a forward fold on my yoga mat, calling someone else that I feel safe with, especially with my family. Sometimes we have different belief systems entirely and different ways of navigating this life. And so it can get really edgy and I can feel like I'm crazy. And then I'll call a friend who just deeply sees and understands me. And I just feel ah, deep remembrance and regulation happen when I just can talk to someone who understands me. And you through this inner revolution of accepting yourself fully are helping to liberate those around you and truly anchor in deep intimacy with your friends and family by initiating conversations of boundaries, by sharing what you know about yourself. It's a really beautiful process. It's vulnerable and edgy and it's so worthwhile. It's all about knowing how to take care of yourself, to communicate well, and to give yourself what you need so that you can just love others fully and be loved fully. I would love to sit in silence with you and just paint all day and say one or two words to each other. And I think that it's such a precious thing to be loud and to be silent. And something that I realized was I would cast so much shame upon myself when I didn't want to talk. And then also when I was really talkative or hyper or energized, I would also cast shame upon myself. I would also be like, oh my God, you're taking up so much space, like calm down a little bit, you know? And I realized that I was just never giving myself a break and that the most problematic thing was this internal voice of judgment that was constantly telling me that I was wrong and softening that voice really became more of a mission than changing who I was every single other day. So if you have that voice, work from there, work from the childhood trauma or or the years of silencing and smalling yourself and remember what being big feels like. I wanted to take a moment to answer some questions that you asked me on Instagram related to this topic. What to do when you start feeling awkward slash nervous in everyday conversation? And I got a similar question. How to know what to talk about with people? I overthink every sentence. And when I would get social anxiety, it felt like my whole personality would just disappear. I just completely forgot who I was and what I liked, what I enjoyed. And one of my biggest tips is to not be afraid of the silence, of taking a moment to breathe into love like i said that heart space and take in the environment around you with whoever you're with which i know is really basic and kind of small talky but i'm assuming that in these experiences it might be with someone who you may not have a lot in common with of course if you do you can talk about something that you really enjoy and a shared thread of interest but if not you can talk about what's going on around you there's a lot of people here today huh or it's the summer solstice coming up. Do you do anything special for the summer solstice? <laughs> Small talk that isn't completely uh, soul crushing, perhaps, like maybe not talking about the weather. And also asking a lot of questions about the other person. If you don't know what to say about yourself, if you lose your personality, like what happens to me when I have social anxiety, just focus all the energy on them. 
pick their brain about what they like in life, about what's true for them, what season of life that they're in, ask them what they're really excited about, ask them a cool fact that they learned today and just make the conversation engaging and like a little bit nerdy. Is it bad that I prefer to only see my friends one to two times a month? I love being alone and go out solo and there's nothing wrong with that. We are making our own rules in all of life. There's no prescribed set way that we're supposed to be that's more ideal than the other. You can only look internally for information on how you want to show up in the world and I think that's incredible that you even know that about yourself and that you can share that with friends like every other week in the month you see them. That's just how you operate and it's so right because it's what's natural and what feels best for you. How do you make friends so easily? I <laughs> have shared a lot of sisterhood on here and I have so many deep, deep, intimate, loving, friendship connections and it's because there are so many common interests with the people that I spend time with that after hanging out once, we're cuddling, we're talking about life, we're crying, we're getting real. The traumas are being witnessed and alchemized and it's because we're all in the deep listening as i like to call it we all have a daily practice we all walk through life with this trust and this awareness of source and spirit and so we've all been doing this work to heal ourselves and break through karmas and be more compassionate be more objective be more nuanced in all of our opinions and so it's easy to come together when you are like that yourself and i've met most of my friends from instagram diana lopez check out her music on spotify um she is one of my best friends and we met on instagram and the first day that i linked up with her i felt like i was in a dream and we were instantly just so close and i just knew it was going to align i have met up with people and the energy isn't right despite what they were sharing and what they were presenting but that's only happened one out of like 10 times yeah you can just have a coffee day and not commit to a full day of activities too when you meet up with these people and honestly just being fully authentically yourself because then you'll be met at that level of authenticity and embodiment how do you balance slash keep new relationships going on days where you don't want to talk now you don't have to talk to your friends every single day and when there's someone who i'm newly connecting with and i notice that i'm not getting back to them enough or i don't have space to make plans with them i will tell them hey this connection is so important to me i love your energy i love what we create when we're together right now i'm feeling really busy and i don't have that much energy for socializing but i just want you to know that i'm always thinking of you even if i'm not messaging you or keeping up to date what really works for me is just sending voice memos and getting back to each other every few days if you do want to keep in touch and i would love to connect next month or whatever amount of time you need until you can connect with them it's like you don't have to be in touch with your people every single day or even every single week it's something that i've really felt shameful about and so anxious about not getting back to my friends who live far away from me all the time but if i'm not seeing someone in person it is really hard for me to keep in touch with them especially through messages or calls so i have spoken to each of these people and said hey sometimes i just disappear because i don't want to be on my phone all the time there's so many little things happening every single day that I'm tending to. I would love to just have one day a month where we catch up and I hope that that's okay. That's my boundary. That's where I'm at right now. All that being said, thank you for showing up just as you are. I appreciate you so deeply. May you continue to use your tools, connect to your breath, anchor in your dream reality through your actions, through your boundary setting. I adore you. Many blessings until I see you next. Bye.